Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I actually wanna share a video that I filmed last year and I had it on an old channel, but I thought it was way more relevant and I thought it would be helpful for you guys here as well. This video is all about when and how to start homeschooling. So if you have a young child and you're not sure where to start, I hope you find this video helpful and I hope you also enjoy a little sneak peek of what it was like while we were living in our RV. Enjoy the video and don't forget to subscribe and visit with us every week. Hi guys, today's video we're gonna be talking about when is the best time or the best age to start homeschooling your kids? Zia has just turned five, like we just finished her birthday celebrations, which is why we're switching over now into back to school mode. And so I wanted to talk about how we've been homeschooling or what we've been doing leading up to this point and what we're going to be doing at this age of five years old. And of course, there is no rule for this. There is no right way or wrong way to do this. It is totally up to you and your family. It's just doing what makes sense for your family. But I love just learning about different education philosophies, different families methods and so I do a ton of reading and research about these types of things so I just wanted to share the knowledge that I've gotten for you guys who may not have as much time to spend or just don't have the interest in kind of going down all those different rabbit holes. So when Zia was first born I obviously like I wanted to do all the things I was so excited first time mom and you want to like do all the fun things with them but in all of my research about different education philosophies, um, I came across some of the things that I resonated with. There were a couple of philosophies that actually recommend delaying any type of formal education until age six. So Zia's only five right now, so we're not totally following that, but I will say that reading and learning about those methods helped to kind of put me at ease a bit. It helped me to slow down and not feel like I had to like rush into anything or get in that that baby rat race of like oh I want my child to do all the things first you know I want my child to be reading before anybody else's kid I want my child to be walking before anybody else like I want them to be doing all the things so that I feel like they're really smart and they're advanced and it's just like this trap that you get caught up in especially nowadays with social media we're the first generation really parenting with social media and being exposed to so many different people and being able to see what so many different people are doing that it's easy to get caught up in that comparison trap. So reading about these kind of more of an old school methods, slower living type methods, um, like very literature based, things like that, where they don't start formal education until six years old, just help me to put my mind at ease and to slow down a bit and, and just not feel like I had to rush into anything. With that being said, we've always just kind of educated Zia like from birth. We're just always exposing her to lots of different things and rather than doing formal education, um, especially early on, I just try to give her lots of different experiences and expose her to things in a fun way to let her experience them and learn about them through her own curiosity. It wasn't any type of like, okay, we have to sit down and learn. I think that is what you should put off until kids are a little bit older. But one thing that was really important to me and that we did start from like the moment she was born, even before she was born, we were reading to her. We were reading to her in my tummy and have continued that. So she, we read a ton to her. We read on average five books or chapters every single day and I absolutely love that. I believe that it has really helped her develop a love for reading and for learning. She's not reading on her own yet. We are just at the beginning stages. Why? Well, I think I saw a cicada flying. Oh yeah? Cool. <laughs> she, we're just at the beginning stages of like CVC words, like the three letter words sounding things out. Um, but she reads on her own a lot of the books that I've already read to her. So she is able to remember the stories that I've told her. She's able to retell them herself, looking through the pictures, looking at the book. And that is also another really important part of learning. And through some of the other methods that I've researched, teachers or homeschooling parents will actually do activities like to incorporate those things. And when I read that, I realized like she's already doing that naturally just from reading to her all the time. Just from having that exposure, she is able to 
um, you know, do narration and retell stories. She understands different words to a sentence. She understands inflections and different tones and things like that. So she already has a lot of those uh, pre-reading skills without doing anything intentional, any formal lessons. Only thing is just intentionally reading to her every day. So that is so important and I highly recommend that to everyone. I'm going to show them one of your favorite books. <laughs> this is one of her favorite books at the moment, the Kitty series. Um, it just goes to show you she's always reading. We're into chapter books now. Now over the past year from four to five we have started to do a little bit of things at home but I've kept it very informal. It's never like okay we have to sit down and do like school time but I have introduced um, movable alphabet letters. We are working on learning a second second language. Some number things with the Montessori math beads because that makes it really tangible and fun and she actually enjoys it and is curious about it. So it hasn't been like just sitting down at a table with worksheets and things like that. I've just wanted to keep it keep her curious and keep any learning that we do fun and engaging and playful. Now that she's five, she's kind of right at that pre-K to kindergarten age. Since we're homeschooling, we have the option to do what we want, and that's one of the beauties of homeschooling. So for our state, we actually don't have to um, register or record or track or you know do anything formal until the age of six anyway. But now that she's five, she's really ready for a little bit more um, intentional learning. And the main reason for me wanting to do this and start to get a little bit more formal with her this year is because I really want to, more than teaching her skills of like language or math or what geography, whatever, it's more important to me to start teaching her self-discipline. I want her to learn a bit more structure and let's face it, in life sometimes we have to do things that we don't necessarily want to do. We have to have a bit of discipline to get things done and I don't want to wait too late to really get her practicing that I because then it will be a struggle if she's never had any sort of structure with learning then I feel like it would be difficult for them to really practice that discipline and be able to put that into practice so we're still gonna start very short so pre-kindergarten kindergarten your homeschooling can, can be about 30 minutes a day that's all that they need to be doing and we'll probably do more than that because we will keep doing what we've been doing. Hang on one second. Which is informal, playful, curious learning. So we're still gonna be doing lots of reading. Those things I don't even count towards like our 30 minutes because we've been doing it, it's fun, she enjoys it. But I am gonna start even with just like 10 minutes consistently every day of doing something where I want to practice her focus a little bit better and I want her to practice her discipline and just get into a learning habit. So that is the biggest, most important thing for us this year. We're excited to get back into back to school mode. We really do learning all year long because we're always learning everywhere we go. It's, it's about experience-based learning. So we're always learning, but I have found that with her birthday kind of right at the end of July, we end up having family um, coming to visit. We have a bit of celebration. And so we naturally take a bit of break um, from any type of structured learning anyway and then it comes right at towards the beginning of August which is back to school time for everybody so we get to just kind of have fun with that buzz and do a little back to school shopping and just kind of get excited for it again so I hope this video has helped to just share some ideas with you um, kind of put that into your mind that you can begin learning with your child from the moment they're born and everything should be just playful and giving them experiences and helping them be curious. You want the most important thing in those first five years is just to foster um, a love for learning. Get them curious about things, get them asking questions and wanting to know more and wanting to learn. And then when you start to bring in a bit more formal learning or formal lessons of things, Keep it playful, keep it fun at first, incorporate it in ways that are very tangible, do things outside, do things that are fun, but in your mind being a bit more intentional about like pointing out letter sounds as you're out doing things in your world or counting things at the grocery store. You know, things that are not like 
sit down lessons, but intentionally you are thinking about you're teaching your child something, even though they don't realize that they're actually learning. And then at whatever age you are ready to start a bit more formal lessons, keep that perspective of it's not necessarily even about the lesson as much as it is about them creating good habits creating self-discipline, and creating a bit more structure for them. And then as you begin those more structured lessons, keep them really short. Keep them really short for little kids and still make it fun and engaging. Take breaks in between, incorporate other types of learning throughout the day too. So when you're homeschooling, it is not school at home. You have the freedom to do things the way that you want. You have the freedom to teach your kids all types of skills that they probably would not even be able to learn in school. So embrace the the things that you get to do differently and don't feel like you have to do school at home. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that this helped you. I hope it gave you some ideas and I would love to hear some of what you guys are doing in the comments below too. So if you are homeschooling, I would love to hear what you've done in the past, what methods you like, um, or if you are just thinking about homeschooling or are curious about it, let me know how this video helped you, um, gave you some different thoughts and ideas, open your mind to it a little bit, and I would love to do more videos like this and share more of our experience to help open people's minds and show them that they can do this. Um, I believe you are the best teacher for your child. If you're an intentional parent, which if you are watching this, you are probably a very good parent, you're interested in helping your child, and you're gonna take the time and effort that goes into like raising a little human and teaching them all the things that they want to learn about in the world. So if you have that desire, then you are truly, I believe, the best, best teacher that your child can have. So don't let anyone make you feel like because you're not a certified teacher or you didn't go to school for teaching that you can't homeschool your child. You absolutely can. And there are tons of resources available online to help you do that and to help you feel more confident in doing that. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. I was just reading my book.